Okay, welcome back to VMworld 23rd. This is the live coverage of SiliconANGLE and Wikibons. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, I'm co-hosting with Dave Vellante. Hi everybody. Gary Orenstein is here. He's an executive vice president at Fusion IO, focused on the product side of the business. Gary, uh, welcome back to theCUBE. I love having you on. We might even talk about Fusion IO a little bit. It, we might <laughs> even get there. Thank you for having me. You guys have a great setup here. Boy, it feels like Times Square <laughs> at VMworld being here on theCUBE. So, we're at, fantastic. We upgrade. I mean, this is our fourth year. This is our original spot. Dave and I in 2010 were actually on the other side, but Moscone South. And everything and happens right here. It, yeah. it does. Yeah. I joked, you know, might even talk about your company, but. Whenever we have you on, we talk about trends, you know, what's yeah. happening in the industry. And, and let's, so I want to start there. I mean, let's do a checkpoint. We're seeing sort of VMware, uh, it's, it's interesting, we were saying before, Defy Convention, they're becoming mainstream. In sure. a lot of ways, they, they have, they've become convention. So now they're trying to you know, move, move beyond. So what's your take on where we're at with this whole virtualization well, trend? Well, it really is amazing how far the conference itself has come, how yeah. far the user base has come. And I think you know, we've seen a lot of statistics recently that the number of virtual servers deployed is now greater than the number of physical servers, so it's no longer a matter of if virtualization is going to happen, but it's happened, and now how quickly can we get from the 50 plus percent virtualized servers to 80, 90 percent virtualized servers, and you know, I think sometimes people forget too, just the, the flexibility that you get with these configurations about being able to move virtual machines around, be, the, the ability to grow these things at scale, it's just so much that can be done compared to ways we've done things in the past. So I think the attendance and the activity and the number of people demonstrating and showcasing solutions at VMworld just goes to, to emphasize that point. Like, like you've been following our uh, progress with theCUBE, we've been following you as well, and obviously we, we talked to Fusion IO here in 2010 uh, when they were private, and they guys hence since gone public, but you, Fusion IO really pioneered Flash, right? At, the, at a level that no one could ever imagine. Big name, web scale companies, hyperscale companies. Now Flash is kind of going mainstream in the data center. So, I want to get your take on this. New entrants are coming in. Uh, you got competition. Um, the market's exploding, you got acceleration. Obviously, everyone's seeing the vision. Server, server compute, storage being kind of mm -hmm. continuing to grow. Not, but not as an island, but connected into a flash-like, right. kind of the hybrid or full flash arrays to full-on data center, like the brains and the heart. The heartbeat and the brain. So, one, do you agree with that? And what's your take on this movement on the mainstream side? Because you're, you've been kind of in the future, doing with all the futuristic guys. We heard from Nutanix, building fate, the best of Facebook, Google, uh, and into a box, and you guys now have done that with Flash. So what is, the what is your take on this data center? Yeah, well the industry's come a long way. You know, at Fusion IO, we're, we're about delivering the world's data faster. And we're doing that today, with some of the largest enterprise customers and some of the largest hyperscale customers in the world. It's really fun to be part of it and see the activity of people really changing the shape of their data center not just improving the performance of the applications, which is obviously critical, but reducing the amount of infrastructure from a cost savings perspective. With Flash, we tend to talk a lot about the performance aspect, which is a very big part of it. But equally important is the ability to reduce budgets and reduce costs, yeah. and one of the interesting things is that when you reduce the cost of computing, you increase the size of the market, you increase the number of solutions that you can serve, you increase the number of people you can serve. You know, earlier this year, we did a, a product launch at the Open Compute Project. We launched our new uh, IO Scale product line. And we've just seen tremendous growth of that product. But now, over the last couple of years, we've dramatically increased the Fusion IO portfolio, where, where not only do we offer uh, solutions that go directly inside the server, but shared solutions, which are a big part of the portfolio now, either in an all-flash configuration, or hybrid configuration, or mixing flash and disk. And of course, a whole suite of virtualized solutions, both for server virtualization, and now for desktop virtualization. So, yes, we're seeing a lot of folks who are talking about things in the market. We haven't seen so many folks who can offer such choice for customers, not only across the favorite server platforms that they have deployed, but also the deployment method. 
and how they want to see, go you know, about it. Gary, a lot of people always ask me and, and Dave or individually together, why are you guys so excited about the enterprise? This is going back to 2010, and Dave and I had a conversation in 2011, we said, you know, you know, people get all excited about the bells and whistles, the apps, and all the sexy, you know, uh, toys out there, but it's under the hood, a lot of action's happening. So Nutanix, we just saw a great example, you guys, under the hood, there's a lot of action going on, and, yeah. and, the, and the, the consequences and the prize is, is significant, it's the data center. Right, so it's the glass house. You guys are <coughs> powering that engine, again, you mentioned some of the scale, but I got to ask you specifically, talk about the mid-range of the marketplace, or the, or the sweet spot of the enterprise market. Everyone's rolling that way, you've had, you know, we all know about Apple, Facebook, and the Oracle's the big, big monster sure. uh, deployments uh, are kind of one-offs, but they, they call them the, the full-end hyperscale, but like, the meat and potatoes enterprise. Well, the engine I, that's powering those guys. Exactly, and I like to say that the web is the engine of innovation, but the enterprise is the engine of our economy. And that goes to show the importance of working with some of the most mission critical applications in Fortune 100 environments, Fortune 10 environments for that example, uh, for example. So across that spectrum of enterprise solutions, we have a lot of activity in the database market, uh, dominated by Oracle and SQL Server, but SAP HANA is rapidly becoming a very important deployment, uh, and folks are using Fusion IO to accelerate the ability to make business critical decisions that change the face of their business. Server virtualization is another big market for us in the enterprise. Virtual desktops, we launched a new IOVDI product today at VMworld, changing again the economics for people with flash memory and virtual environments. And then of course on the big data side, and increasingly even in the enterprise, we're seeing the adoption of some of the popular big data NoSQL databases like MongoDB and Cassandra and HBase. So we feel really excited about being able to cover this spectrum of solutions, database, server virtualization, VDI and big data for enterprise accounts and let them do it in a way with flash memory that not only speeds up their performance, but reduces the cost and gives them the choice of how do they want to deploy. Some people like to deploy flash where they can share it as a shared storage resource. Some people like to go for the maximum performance and minimal latency right inside their uh, server, and some people like to go in the virtual environment. We're obviously talking a lot about that here today at VMworld, and so we have solutions there uh, also yeah, too. Yeah, big vSAN announcement today. Another um, one, yes. So you see VMware, you guys got some software chops of your own, VMware throwing its hat in the ring, and, and obviously a big part of that is aimed at, at, at Flash. Right, right, so for yeah. folks who haven't seen the vSAN news, uh, VMware is talking about that extensively at the show. vSAN is the ability to take local storage resources, if we just use an ex as, an, as an example three servers, uh, for vSAN, you have to have some flash memory and some uh, hard drive space in each of those servers, and then vSAN sort of packages that all together as a SAN, but it's right inside that server layer. And so it's very convenient for a lot of customers who, for whatever reason, don't want to have an external SAN, but like that shared storage functionality. Uh, we have a demo of uh, vSAN at our booth. We're at booth 1245. Uh, down on the show floor and we're showcasing a vSAN demonstration and obviously we think that when you combine VMware's vSAN software with Fusion IO, you've got a, a nice combination. Well, and you know, you've seen over the decades uh, uh, software companies like Microsoft and, and Oracle grab storage function, right, so as a, as, a, as a supplier of infrastructure and infrastructure software, you've got to pick your spots. Right. right? And you've got to pick spots where there's white space that's sustainable that you don't get you know, eaten alive. So, and I, at one point I would have thought that that function that VMware announced today would have been you know, your domain. So, help us sort of squint through where that white space is for Fusion IO. Yeah, so there's so many answers to that question. Um, but at a high level, you know, there, there is a, a, a fixed stack, so to speak, in terms of the application going to storage. In some cases, people will find that using the tools out of the box from their software vendor will provide them what they need. A great example to take a slight divergence from the uh, VMware side is, is uh, you know, some of the popular databases come with their own built-in volume management and replication tools, mm -hmm. so you can just use that as is. When we get to the uh, VMware side, what we've seen is while folks are continuing to increase some of the mainstream functionality, uh, so like this vSAN announcement, which works great with Fusion IO, there are other elements about uh, providing acceleration in VMware environments that don't come out of the box. So being able to provide extreme server density uh, using Flash as a cache 
but while retaining all of the built-in VMware features like vMotion and disaster recovery services and HA and SRM, those are places where the IO Turbine software that we mm -hmm. use to help with virtual environments really kicks in. Or in the desktop world, if you want to have a combination of keeping your existing storage but accelerating with flash memory at the server and want to go into some cool new IO optimization capabilities to really boost the IO to the virtual desktops and minimize the IO that goes to the SAN, extending the investment, helping save costs. These are areas where we continue to provide additional value for customers that integrate perfectly with the uh, VMware tools that they know and love. Also integrating with the storage systems they know and love. One of the big focuses of uh, the Fusion IO solutions, whether it's the IO Turbine software for server virtualization or the new IO VDI software and uh, flash memory for desktops is, you know, if you have a storage system that you know and love, don't change it. We don't want you to change it. You like it. So we want to find a way to augment that that makes it easy for the customers. Gary, there's a panel going on right now. Mark Andreessen, Pat Gelsinger, Andy Besenstein, and um, Graham Hay, who's with Credit Suisse Strategy They should guy. be having that panel so, here. Yeah, so, right, get you know, on the queue. <laughs> and that's why everyone's watching us uh, over them. They were the real, the signals here. Um, I got to ask you, what is the future of the data center? I mean, you know, they're going to have a take on, it's going to be all oh, it's great, you know, rosy, colored sunglasses they're going to have on. So, you know, we know what they're going to say. I mean, Mark is going to say software's eating the world. Pat Gels is going to say all his messaging. But I got to ask you, you're in the, you're in the trenches you're leading the marketing, you've been on the product side of Fusion. You know, what is the future of the data center and, and will SDDC, Software Defined Data Center, happen? And what will it look like? What's your prediction? What's your view? Sure, well I think the software capabilities are already happening now. You could say, depending on your definitions, that just putting in the virtualization layer gets you to step one of software defined. And I think that's a great starting point. You go from managing physical resources to now managing virtual resources, and so consider that step one on a path to a more fully automated software-defined data center. At Fusion I.O., we're paying very cl close attention, understandably, to the all-flash data center. And we really think that in 2013, we've come and crossed the threshold from people thinking about flash to people getting to a point where they want to really plan an implementation path to get there. Now when I say the all flash data center, disks aren't going away, tape is not going away. Oh darn. Oh, we can't, <laughs> there's no fight here Please. on that front. Well, someone's <laughs> got to die, it's, it's, it's the end of the movie, come on. You know, <laughs> one, thing to die. Spinning. one thing I've learned uh, <laughs> paying attention to this is it's much better to predict the arrival of new media <laughs> than it is to predict the death of any media. Well, tape was supposed to be dead what, a long tape time ago. Tape was supposed to be so dead, and a year or two ago, Google has an outage and the recovery came from tape. So, bar, you know, barring <laughs> you, in mind you that- mean, You mean full adoption of flash. So full adoption of flash, in a way that helps people with their databases, with their server virtualization, with their VDI, with their big data. We're at that point, and what's exciting is that there's so many combinations of both hardware deployments and where that goes, server layer, storage layer, uh, virtual layer, uh, as well as the software options that help. So if we're not going to go, so not you, say, you can say this though, all active data will reside on Flash. So you know, those other media. Not me saying it, uh, we've had customers right. who say, if I'm running my application and I have to leave the motherboard to process something for my application. That's a problem. I'm re I'm, that's right. a problem, and so the active data set as you identified, yes, that has to be in Flash. Because we, you know, when is the last time you use your phone, like I can wait, I can wait for that app. You know, you know we don't have any Doesn't patience. Happen, right? We live yeah. in a real-time world. I mean, Nobody wants to wait. Uh, it's not necessarily something to be proud of, but it's just well, where we, we are as a as a the as iPhone a tech certainly society. killed a few phones. You know, to use the movie analogy, someone dying at the end. But the, you know, keep with the movie analogy. The guy gets the girl. The girl gets the guy. So in the ecosystem, I got to ask you the question: Who's with who? Who's dancing with who? Who's winning? Yeah. Uh, who marries yeah. who? Who? You know, <laughs> what, what happens? What's going? Well, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you know has to play out yeah. at many levels. So uh, many, many levels. So I, you know, I'll let other people speak about their own partner ecosystem. Uh, here at VMworld, we're showcasing solutions from all of our uh, OEM partners, and that includes Cisco, and Dell, and HP, and IBM. So if you make your way down to the booth, we actually have four pods set up that showcase the work that we've done with those uh, partners. And you know, that's years in the making, not only having the IO memory products, our IO drives, and IO scale products that can be uh, purchased through our OEM partners, but being able to have validated, tested configurations, reference architectures, the whole like. So we talked with uh, Diraj from uh, um, Nutanix. He yeah. talked about his success. Yeah. They made some good bets early. Yeah. Okay, not just improving performance. What yeah. bets did Using Fusion, Fusion IO as well. What did Fusion bet on that is making you guys continue to be <clears> successful? 
That's a great question. I think what you know, people always say, well, why, why, what's going on with Fusion IO? Why is Fusion IO different? From the get-go, Fusion IO made a decision that we were going to look at flash as memory and not as a disk drive. And while it might come up and show to the operating system like a piece of block storage, we've really tried to exploit the media to do everything that it can do. And that's paid off for us in terms of uh, solutions that offer the lowest latency and the highest performance at the, uh, the lowest overall cost for our customers. It's also allowed us to uh, go out and acquire companies like NextGen Software and now what we call the IO Control hybrid storage product. So IO Control implements flash memory as memory, whereas almost every other hybrid storage product is tucking flash memory behind SAS and SATA controllers. So really, again, not exploiting the, the media for what it can do. And you know, when you look at the future, if you want to talk about what's coming, we're going to have more memory-centric architectures. Uh, certainly in 30 days, there's another big database conference coming up. The whole talk is going to be about in-memory this and in-memory that. Uh, so when we look at Flash and we say, how can we take this new media that's exciting and its potential and allow customers to exploit it? It's been Flash's memory. And then I think beyond that is just having the, the products is one step, but being able to offer people a complete solution is the next step. So you're going to see a big focus from Fusion IO across providing database solutions, server virtualization solutions, BDI solutions, and big data solutions so we can help customers get to more and more of a, a flash-ready, all-flash data center. Okay, Gary, Gary Orenstein here, CUBE alumni multiple times. He keeps getting promoted, so the CUBE has been a good luck charm yeah. for him. He's now EVP <laughs> Thank you. Do we have time marketing. for one more, one more little uh, piece? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One piece I want to make sure people are aware is we've opened up the Fusion IO Performance Cafe. It's a retail show space, coffee, morning snacks, just around the corner uh, next to the Westin Hotel. 28 Third Street for the Fusion IO Performance Cafe. We've got demonstrations, giveaways, so not only is there a great booth down on the VMware show floor, but the Fusion IO Performance Cafe, make it's, it a stop and also on the, the roster. Western, if you were facing the Westin Hotel, it's just to the right hand okay. side, look for Fusion, Fusion IO, okay, look for the crowd, the swarming mass. Also the Fusion <laughs> wagon is out there. The Fusion um, wagon, a, a 1968 up. VW bus free, wagon. Fr it's free. It's free, it's running it's around, ride, take okay. pictures, so. Can we get an entourage, a CUBE entourage, <laughs> a fusion wagon after we Next collapsing episode in the after cube. day one? Garen, it's always a pleasure. And Thank you, you know, for having us. You guys have been on theCUBE for a long time, been following yeah. Fusion, awesome. a leader in Flash, the all-Flash data center. That's what Mark Andreessen and those guys are probably talking about on that panel. Uh, we're going to go audit that in a second. We'll be right back, this is theCUBE. Stay with us for multi-day coverage, wall-to-wall, -wall, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll be right back after this short break.